Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Taste the Island of Ireland, brought to you by Tourism Ireland and Baxter Media. I'm Dan McDonald with Baxter and today is Thursday, September 19th. Speaking for us first today is Roisin Collins, Digital Marketing Coordinator at Tourism Ireland. Hi Roisin, how are you today? Hi Dan, great thanks, how are you? I'm doing good thanks. So just before we get into it, I'd like to let all the viewers know that if you have any questions during this webinar, just type them into the Q&A box found in your Zoom toolbar or the chat box, and those questions will be answered after the presentation has finished. Also, if you have any problems hearing or seeing the presentation, just type a quick message into the chat box and I'll do my best to assist you. Okay, Roisin, since you're already sharing your screen and that we can see it, you can start whenever you're ready. Perfect. Thanks so much. So welcome, everybody. Um, today, obviously, we're going to talk about Taste the Island. Um, Ireland really has experienced a foodie revolution, and there's so many wonderful things to eat here now. So I'm delighted that I get the opportun opportunity to present this to you, um, obviously, with our presenters as well. So just to give you an overview of today, um, the agenda is I'm going to touch on why Ireland, and then I'm going to introduce you to our three presenters. So we've got Gillian Campbell from Armagh Cider Company, Nicola McDonnell from the Irish Whiskey Museum, Museum, and Evelyn Coyle from Fab Food, Fab Food Trails. Um, so as you can see, then we'll do some questions and answers at the very end. And make sure you stay tuned because you're in with the chance to win a Waterford Crystal vase. So Taste the Island. This is a fantastic new initiative that has just launched. It will take place from the 6th of, 6th of September to the 30th of November. And it has over 600 foodie events um, throughout the island of Ireland. So both Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. It has innovative artisan producers and world-class chefs coming together to show all of the different produce on the island of Ireland. And it really is amazing. Um, you should check out the website because they have so many different tours and trails um, that you can do. And it just looks delicious, if I do say so myself. Then I couldn't not talk about the great whiskey revolution that is also happening in Ireland. And the great thing is here is that you can actually visit distilleries. Um, so I think there's only over 17 different visitor centers along, um, you know, you can obviously go and taste some and get to experience the history behind the whiskey as well. Um, so a really cool thing to do while you're on the island of Ireland. And then also I have to mention, Ireland is a lot closer than you think. So a lot of people tell me, oh, you know, it's, it's miles away, you know, it'll take forever to get there. But a lot of people don't realize that it's only a six and a half hour flight from Toronto to Dublin. So it really is very accessible. Um, and there's lots of different gateways, as you can see. Um, <clears throat> there's over five direct, sorry, there is five direct flights from Canada. So that's Vancouver, Calgary, Toronto, Montreal and Halifax. And some of them are year round and some are seasonal. So you can have a look at the diagram there and you can also check out our website for more flight information. Then I'd also have to mention just about the different festivals um, throughout the year. Um, so we're open 365 days a year, always open for business. Um, the Galway International Oyster Festival, this is the longest running oyster festival in the world. It's very famous. It runs at the end of September. And then obviously there's the Taste of Ireland uh, Festival, which I just mentioned. And then there's the Taste of West Cork Food Festival, which kicks off the Taste of Ireland um, in the next few weeks. Um, and just really nice things to do when you come to Ireland, Get to meet locals, experience authentic flavors, um, and just something different. And then I have to mention the new festival called Puka, which is taking place in Ireland's ancient east, which I'll show you in a few minutes. Um, but this is the new Halloween festival, and, and there'll be some foodie treats of that too. So there are different touring routes in Ireland. So on the north coast of Ireland, you'll see there's the Causeway Coastal Route. Um, on this route, you'll experience the Gobbins, Carrickareed Rope Bridge, the Giant's Causeway. So some really stunning uh, views along that coast. Um, then on the west coast of Ireland, this is called the Wild Atlantic Way. It's over two and a half thousand kilometers of coastal route as well. And I think the great thing about coming to Ireland is it's very easy to do, you know, a scenic day tour to let's say the Cliffs of Moher or Schlieve League, but then you can come into the city it's only an hour away and just kind of immerse yourself in a bit of urban nightlife a bit more culture and um, so although we're small we really do pack a punch and then on the east coast of Ireland you'll see there as I mentioned Puka and um, this is Ireland's ancient east so there's over 5,000 years of history in this part of Ireland um, and it, it's really great because you know Newgrange for example that predates the Egyptian pyramids so you can go back here you can explore the Viking heritage and you can explore your own heritage as well 
And then I couldn't not mention the weather, of course. Um, so I've yet to experience a weather in Toronto and myself, or sorry, a winter in Toronto yet myself, but I've heard it's pretty harsh. Um, but I know in Ireland, it's only five to eight degrees in winter. So again, it's always a good time to visit. We encourage people to visit throughout the year, whether it be on peak or off peak. Um, it's always a great place to visit. And now I'm going to introduce you to Gillian, who's going to talk about our Ma Cider Company. Hi everyone, it's a fantastic opportunity to be able to speak to you this evening about beautiful Armagh. Um, you're speaking about the weather, it's actually 19 degrees in Armagh today, it's quite unseasonal, um, but the sun's shining so we're making the most of it. Um, if you wouldn't mind moving on, we'll have a wee look at uh, where we actually are located. Um, so I am based in Northern Ireland just over the border into Northern Ireland. So I'm the perfect gateway into the north of Ireland. So for people traveling from Dublin, we are about one hour and a half from Dublin airport. Um, and we're about 45 minutes from Belfast. Um, you can see there the um, fantastic Titanic mentioned and also the Giants Causeway. And um, both of those venues are very accessible from um, Armagh city itself. Um, so if we move on, we'll have a wee chat about apples in the area. Um, Armagh is known as the Orchard of Ireland. And uh, where did this all begin? Well, the Bramley apple, as we know it today, came to um, this area in um, the 18th century. It was planted on the, the very farm that you're looking at now um, by um, a gentleman called uh, John Nicholson. Um, that Bramley apple has, has gone on to, to blossom, excuse the pun, um, and now means that our Bramley has protected geographical indication or PGI status. And that's extremely important to us. There are only a handful of products in Ireland um, with that status. Our Bramley apple is as important as the champagne grape. So if we move on a bit, I'll, I'll speak to you um, about the actual orchard that I'm from. Um, so it's called Arma Cider Company. Um, orchards in, in Arma have about 4,000 acres and we produce 35,000 tonnes of fruit. Now, that's a heck of a lot of apple tarts. But what we want your customers to be able to do is to become immersed in our experiences. Um, and our experiences has changed over the years. Um, we used to actually grow apples for, for multinationals to be able to produce cider. And then we had this light bulb moment. Why are we giving our apples to multinationals? We we'll produce cider ourselves. So today we're actually growing apples for our own cider and apple juice production. So we want your customer to be able to visit the farm, meet me, the producer, um, share the story of our lives. So it's a working farm. Whatever's happening on that day is what your customer is going to get. And, you know, we're very passionate about the stories that are connected, not only to the family and the farm, but also to the apple industry in Ireland. Um, we're very enthusiastic in everything that we do. And we don't really offer you a visit. We offer you an experience. Um, and that experience, of course, in, in this the year of, of Taste the Island has to include a picnic lunch. But we'll have a wee chat about that later on. Um, Incidentally, this evening, um, we're about to launch our Food and Cider Festival, um, which is perfect for FIT visitors. Um, the Food and Cider Festival is the third weekend in September annually. Um, and it's where we're able to take our local artisan chefs out into the um, orchards to produce high-class dining. So if I was to walk down the orchard now, there's the most amazing teepee tent set up for a Bramley apple banquet in um, the autumn sunshine. So it looks absolutely fantastic. So maybe we'll move on a wee bit, Rashim, please. So on a tour of Arma Cider, what happens? Well, you're meeting with the owner and um, they're engaging with you in their stories about life in an orchard. Um, so why does Arma grow apples? Well, we actually have our own microclimate. We're two degrees warmer than the rest of Northern Ireland. And that's because of our, our close proximity to the Loch Ness Basin. That microclimate allows us to produce apples when other places can't. Um, but we want you to get right into the heart or into the core of the apple or into the core of the orchard um, and be absorbed by the sights and the smells of, of this world-class product. Um, 
you're really hearing about our story um, and you're becoming part of our story. Um, and your journey through the orchard is actually going to take you from blossom right through to the product going into the bottle. And suffice to say, the, the tour is actually seasonal. So people visiting in April are getting to see blossom. People visiting in summer are getting to see growth. And people visiting at this time of the year, the trees are just laden with apples and ready for harvest. So we'll have a chat about the rest of the, of the tour then. Um, so how do we get the apples into the bottles? Well, <laughs> you're actually going to see how the apples are processed. So when we um, juice our apples, and we put our, our, our juice into vats and those vats immediately produce apple juice. There's no additive add, added, it's all a, a natural product. When we leave that sitting for a while, it eventually becomes cider. Um, now seasonally, we will add berries to that to create various varieties, um, but generally our cider would sit for, for a few weeks before um, it's ready for consumption. Um, we make eight different types of ciders and apple juice and our tour allows you to actually taste um, those apple juices and ciders. Um, you know, sometimes um, Helen um, in the orchard is called the witch because it's her that does all the blending. So she creates all of the flavors for us. But we'll also tell you how we named our ciders and things like that. And there's wee quirky stories attached to that as well. Um, so you really are following the, the apple through the whole process. Um, so if we move on a wee bit there for me, please. So once we've had um, our tasting of um, the apple juice and we've, um, we've seen the orchard and the sights and the smells, um, it's time to take a seat in our 18th century barn. And that's when you really get to immerse yourself in everything apple. Um, we invite you then to enjoy a picnic lunch and the picnic lunch hasn't traveled any more than five miles to be on the table. It's our ethos that if we are creating a local product, our apple, when we're creating our lunch, it should all be local as well. So it's homemade soup, traditionally as your granny would have made, artisan breads, a savory roll with homemade chutneys, and it is followed by the best apple pie and cream ever. The, um, the measure of a good apple pie is no soggy bottom. And believe me, ours definitely doesn't have a soggy bottom. Um, we really pride ourselves on being able to deliver a taste of this place. So it's Arma on a plate and in a glass. We also can offer high-end um, dining experiences. So quite recently, in, in fact, just the other night with a lovely group of guests in, and um, they had um, a fine dining experience in the orchard in the evening. So we're looking at, you know, maybe more flavorful things like roast parsnip and, and Bramley apple soup or um, honey spit um, pork. Um, and again, our, our very fine apple pie. So really our, our catering experiences can, can suit the needs of, of your customer. But in, in the beautiful, beautiful autumnal light, that high-end evening dining experience is just perfect for groups. So maybe we'll move on, please. Yeah, so I mentioned very briefly um, our Food and Cider Festival um, and this year it's running um, from today to the 22nd of September and it's really about everything apple based. Um, we are absolutely delighted that not only has Arma Cider Company as a as a tour, won um, the Northern Ireland Tourism Award Most Immersive Experience for 2019, but our Food and Cider Festival has actually won Northern Ireland Food and Drink Experience of the Year in the, two, in the Northern Ireland Tourism Awards as well. Um, and, you know, that mark of quality um, really um, is well deserved. Um, we want you to sample some of our finest cuisine from across the county um, and, and marry that with our local ciders and beers. Um, a very famous chef, um, I shouldn't really quote him, did say that what grows together goes together. And I think that's what our Food and Cider Festival really encompasses. Um, so it's a perfect opportunity for people to really um, taste um, the island and taste the county of, of Armagh. So if you'd like to move on for me there, please. So I wanted to put together just some rough idea of costs and, and times that would be required to 
do a tour of a pharma cider company um, and my email is there um, I will handle all your bookings so you can see that you know your tour with the tasting and your picnic lunch is 57 um, Canadian dollars um, which is is very keenly priced um, and then we do have other offerings so you can do your tour with just your tasting or what about a tour with afternoon tea or again the high-end um, dining experience for um, the evening time. Um, I suppose really I, I just want to stress that at the end of the day I'm here to help you um, you know with your tours not only of the orchard um, but also of the city of Armagh uh, and I look forward to your um, inquiries in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> that was really great, Gillian. Um, I actually would love to see that banquet. It sounds absolutely amazing. Um, so now I'm going to pass you over to Nicola, who's going to talk about the Irish Whiskey Museum. Thank you, Roisin, and thank you, Gillian. That looks great. Um, the Irish Whiskey Museum is part of the EI Travel Group. So this group comprises Irish Day Tours, EI Adventures, The Riddler, um, Busy Bikes and the Irish Whiskey Museum. And we've just recently taken over the franchise for Dublin City Sightseeing Tours as well. Today I'm just going to talk about the Irish Whiskey Museum. Um, the Irish Whiskey Museum is located, um, if you just go to the next slide there, Roisin, it's on the corner of Grafton Street, which is Dublin's main shopping street. And it's just uh, facing the main gates of Trinity College, which some of you will know is where the Book of Kells can be seen. Um, we opened five years ago in November, and our aim was really to tell the history of Irish whiskey. We're independent from the drinks industry, so we tell you the unbiased history. So we, we tell you about all the brands and how whiskey was tied into the social and political history of Ireland. And it's a very interesting story. Um, our main uh, product is tours throughout the day. And I'll talk to you about some of the other products we have um, as I go, go through the presentation. So we have classic and premium tours that run from 10.30 in the morning till 5.30 in the evening, every 30 minutes. The tours are one hour long. They're 45 minutes of history through three teamed rooms from the 8th century right through to modern day. And you finish up in a tasting bar where if you do the classic tour, you taste three Irish whiskies from different distilleries. And if you did a premium tour, it's the same tour essentially, but you get an extra aged whiskey and a souvenir whiskey museum shot glass to take away. And so we have FIT rates and we have group rates. So a walk-in rate would normally be 20 euro or 10.25 for the, the group tour operator rate B2B. So that's 14 Canadian dollars. So that's for the three whiskies or um, 21.90 for the premium tour for groups of 10 or more. Just go to the next slide there, Roisin. We also offer a blending experience in the evening time at four o'clock and at six o'clock. And this runs for one and a half hours. It's more for the whiskey connoisseur who likes just a little bit of extra whiskey. And there are bigger shots of whiskey and you have a 45 minute interactive tasting. And uh, you blend your own little mini bottle to take away and you give it a name. And um, we have great banter over what people call the whiskeys when they're taking them away. So the walk-in rate for that, again, is, is 30 euro FIT or, or 22.50 for a tour operator, which is 32 Canadian dollars. Or if you have a group of 10 or more, it's $30.66 or 21 euro. At 10 o'clock in the morning, um, we have a brunch tour, which is the classic tour. And um, so we are three whiskey tastings. And afterwards, you sit down to an Irish brunch of smoked salmon, um, soda bread, which is a typical Irish um, bread you, you may get in Canada too, and some real Irish butter and some whiskey marmalade and some tea and coffee. And that's quite relaxed. And we run that from October to March and um, Friday to Sunday. And then the summertime, it runs daily from April to September. And we also offer this as an extra, if, if a tour operator, say, arrives early in the morning and you can't check into your hotel, it's a good way to pass away to two and a half hours. And you're overlooking lovely Trinity College out the window. Um, the group rate for this is 19.50 or 28.47 Canadian dollars. On top of our normal tours, we also um, run, uh, we have a, the venue to hire in the evening time. So we don't typically open from Monday to Thursday in the evening time. So after the six o'clock blend um, finishes, the museum is, is uh, free and is open for hire for private tours or for party nights or a typical Irish night. 
um, we host, sorry, I think I'm kind of crossing over. But anyway, I'll tell you what it's like. So they have, um, so we have the three floors and we can host up to 140 people and um, or for a smaller group is 20 people. And on these nights we can do um, baron lessons, which is an Irish drum. We can do uh, trad music, fiddle lessons, um, karaoke. Um, and you can have some food and have a tour. So you can have it kind of as your last night of your tour or your first night of your tour or some kind of typical Irish night in between. But we can also do outside of ours, we can also run private groups and, and during the day, but we can run private groups, tours after six o'clock if you have over 20 people. You can hire a museum in the evening time or even before we open at 10 o'clock in the morning, you can hire the, um, do a tour earlier in the day. And the tour group size is 28. Or if you had 50 people, we would split them into two parts and leaving 15 minutes apart. So we've had groups of 200 people where we just literally every 15 minutes send a group of 30 people, next 30, next 30, until everybody's been through the building. I'm just going to move on there, Roshan. Um, I just covered that already. So we also have weekend entertainment. Um, we open every Friday night now for um, kind of karaoke with an Irish twist. And then on Saturday and Sunday, we have live trad and, and folk musicians from seven to nine. And that's free entry. So if you're in Dublin and you have FITs who are just looking for something to do, they can pop in uh, free of charge and enjoy the bar. So the bar is a full license. So we have pints of Guinness and cocktails and wine and gin and obviously lots of whiskey. And then in our retail area, there. We have over 100 types of Irish whiskey, everything from standard whiskies that you can get at the airport to higher end, like Middleton Rares. Um, it's located on the first floor, so even if you don't have time to come in and do a tour, you can pop up and buy a nice bottle of whiskey as a gift or for yourself to take home. Our team are fully trained. Because we're independent from the drinks industry, all of the distilleries come and train our staff on their whiskey so they can sell them for, for the distilleries. So we've got a lot of knowledge in all the different styles of whiskey. And the staff are always on hand and are always very, very willing to recommend a whiskey and to kind of help you choose one that would suit your palate. And finally then, um, we're very excited about Tasty Island. It's a great initiative by, by Walter Ireland and Tourism Ireland. We are um, going to do a Four Corners of Ireland whiskey and cheese pairing event. So we literally have uh, whiskey from the four provinces, from north, south, east and west coast. And uh, they, we've asked a distillery to pair one of their whiskies with a local cheese. And on the night we'll have guest speakers and they'll come in and they'll present on why they chose the cheese to go with their whiskey. Um, so that's three dates in October to tie in with the Tasty, Tasty Island Festival, but it's something that we can do at any time as well. So if you had a group and you want to do a whiskey and cheese pairing, we are quite small, so we're always willing to tailor make an activity for your group, if you have a specialised group, you want to do something different from what we normally offer. That's it. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thanks so much, Nicola. And um, I was actually on an event there uh, earlier in the year and it was a fantastic event space. So I'm dying oh, to do the tour now after seeing that. Um, I'm going to pass on now to Evelyn, who's going to talk about Fab Food Trail. Hello. Good e um, well, good evening from here and good morning to you there. Um, so we've been doing, we do walks around Dublin and Cork. They're all food led walks, uh, two and a half to three hours in length. Um, and if you want to move on there, Roisin, there's just a couple of slides from each of the walks just to give you a flavour of it. Um, so what we do is we take groups, we generally pop the numbers at 12, but with bigger groups like, um, you know, if somebody had, say, 36 people or we, we just divide them into three different groups, all starting at the same time, each with their own guide and visiting more or less, but not always exactly the same places. So what we do is we wander around the city in Cork or Dublin, depending on where you are. These are Dublin slides you're seeing. And we go into all small independently owned places. So these are not um, delis or shops or cheese, cheese shops that you're going to find anywhere else. They're particular to the city. Um, and in each place, as you taste, you generally meet the purveyor or the maker. And they will tell you a little bit about what they're um, serving you but it's not food police it has to be a little bit of fun 
And as we go around, uh, the a guide will just point out things around the city. Now, we tend to get quite a lot of Irish people on these as well. So there's usually a mix um, on any one walk, which works well, but the, um, because the Irish people will always uh, throw in their Hayden's worth of anything or anywhere that we are, and that kind of adds to it a little bit. The idea, though, is to reflect uh, how we all eat today. So it's a mix of the um, traditional and contemporary table. All of the places that we go to, we choose because we in Dublin, as a group of 12 guides, the places we shop, we would go and meet a bakery that we might go to somewhere that we would buy our meat. Um, we generally have a pub stop along the way. And again, it would be a pub that locally we would, we would visit. So that's the kind of how it breaks down. Um, the, this, this again is Dublin. You could move on then and we move on to Cork. Cork is very much based, it's exactly the same idea. We meet in the city. Um, Cork, of course, is known for its English market, the English market, and for the quality of all their food. Oh, right. I've, yes, I've skipped to Cork. Great. Um, so we do visit the English market, but we just do two tastings there and then the rest are around the city. And the guides in each case would be local to wherever you are. So they will tell you a little bit about the history, a little bit about the architecture and the stories that go along with it. I skipped over too quickly the food and fashion there because um, in Dublin, we also do a walk which we call food and fashion and it's a split. It's um, a mix of for sort of retail and then the other four would be food. Again, there are places like, for example, the one you're looking at there is a place called Stable and they are very particular, very fine work, very particular to Ireland. It's very much about bringing back the art of weaving of uh, linen, things that we have had great um, history, but have been sort of went at, gone out of fashion a little bit. And they are reintroducing that. What you're seeing there, that scarf there, for example, um, that is knit by, by a knitter who lives very close to Dublin, but all of the pattern in it is based on Limerick lace, something that we would again have had a um, would have been very famous in its day. You won't find that anywhere else. You will not step off a plane and find anything from stable. So those are the sort of, that's the kind of level that we choose. Um, and it's, as I say, half and half. These are hats designed by Anthony Petto, who has a wonderful hat shop in uh, South Anne Street in Dublin, right in the heart of Dublin. So then if we move on maybe to the evening trails there, Rishi. These are walks we tend to do earlier in the week. Um, and it's more of a dinner option because what we do there is we would visit uh, three to four different restaurants and have a course in each paired with either wine or beer. And then we would go and have, uh, a, after at the end of that, we would go and have something sweet or something like an Irish coffee, but it would be a lot more casual. We might go to a pub for an Irish coffee or we might go to an ice cream parlor for an ice cream. So it's a kind of blend. Again, we keep the numbers at about 12. Uh, with bigger groups, we simply stagger them and we can do the same thing. We run those though, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays. We don't do them later in the week because the places that we tend to visit are very busy and they don't have the time to come and talk. And on any of, of our walks, really meeting the people involved in wherever you are is as important, if you like, as the food. So that's the evening one. Um, if you move on there, uh, Roisin. This is a supper club we're running, and this is Erica. Erica is a guide, but she's also a wonderful chef. And we're doing sort of supper clubs in her house, which is a lovely Victorian house. Um, and the limit on that is eight, and we can only do one in any one evening. So it's, it's quite particular, but it's really smashing. It's great. She, you know, you get a welcoming drink when you arrive. Uh, she sits in her, there's a lovely front room. Uh, fire is usually lighting in winter. And um, she just tells them what she's doing, makes everybody feel at ease, does a little bit of a demonstration, and then you come to the table. So it, it's, um, it's quite new to us, but it's really lovely. And for the Taste the Island, island uh, during it, we are doing um, a special autumn one, uh, just one each month for September, October, November. 
So I think that probably covers it. Uh, all of the walks are city based. You can see where Dublin and Cork. Um, and but the, the starting point varies because the routes can vary quite a bit in both cities. So that's it. That's that's us. If you have any questions. Perfect. Thank you so much for that. Uh, so I suppose I, uh, my name is Laura and I work alongside my colleague Roisin here in Canada. So I'm just going to chat to you very quickly on how Tourism Ireland can help you. Um, so first of all, definitely sign up to our newsletter on Ireland.com. You'll receive up to date information on what's happening on the Isle of Ireland and the fantastic offers that are available on the website. Um, in addition, we are a local market office team. We are five person based here, if you like our little emojis. Uh, and we're more than happy to assist with any questions or any advice that you may need, whether it be assistance in itinerary planning or questions on how best to get from Kilkenny to Belfast in one day. Also, we have tons of promotional, promotional literature uh, for your office. And which you can share with your clients or keep on hand and best of all it's available in English and French. Uh, these brochures can be ordered through the Ireland.com website or they can be ordered by directly reaching out to us. Um, in addition to this you should join our Facebook Discover Ireland page. This is a group that is exclusive, exclusive for members of the travel trade and it's a great way to communicate with the industry. You can join by simply following um, our Discover Ireland CA Facebook group. And then within that, there's a, a, a dedicated group there. Or if you can't find it, email my colleague Sandra and her details are on the screen here and she'll be more than happy to add you. In addition to that, I hope that, um, that a couple of you are Ireland specialists. But if not, definitely do join today. Uh, you can find it on our trade.ireland.com. It's a short interactive online training program that allows you to improve your earning potential by selling Ireland as a destination. At the end of the course, you'll receive a gold or silver Ireland specialist search that you can add to your email signature. So another way to help boost your revenue to Ireland. In addition to that, do check out all the great things that we have on Ireland.com. We have detailed itinerary planning, as well as lots of inspiration, whether you want to plan a trip around whiskey tasting or going on a foodie trip around Ireland's ancient East, we've got you covered. In addition, we also have a great YouTube channel, which you can then share on your own social media. Uh, so lots of videos on our Discover Ireland YouTube channel from food inspiration to basic planning, such as what to pack or what's, what's the weather like in Ireland or various different other inspirational videos. And we also have a great Tasty Island video, which can be used to share on your social media platforms as well. Another great resource for you guys is Ireland's content pool. It's a free to use resource. All you have to do is register your email to sign up and there's tons of assets and videos that you can use. You can use in the likes of marketing campaigns or advertising campaigns that you guys can use with great detailed imagery of Ireland. And last but not least, we do join us on our social media channels. Um, we, are avail we are on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and we use the hashtag Love Ireland to promote all the great content that there is around Ireland. So uh, I'm going to hand it back over to Roisin and our lovely panelists here. And if there's any questions you have, uh, do ask them. Now's your chance to shine. Thanks so much for that, Laura. And yes, as Laura said, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat box now. Um, and then maybe there's some others that have come true. That's right. Thank you so much, Laura. And thanks to everyone else. It looks like a couple questions have been submitted to the Q&A box already. And the first one looks like it's for uh, Nicola, so I'll unmute you. Uh, and the question, which is from Deborah, is are there travel agent rates for the whiskey tours? Yes, so if you go back to the slides, which I think you're going to distribute afterwards, um, the walk-in rate for the classic tour is 20 euro, but it's 10.25 for the travel agent. And what oh, I put the Canadian rate in there. Sorry, I just can't remember off the top of my head. But yeah, it's, um, that is. So it's, it's about 45% discount from the walk-in rate. If you go back to two slides back. Oh yeah, that's it. So um, the classic group, which is, if you come down to the bottom, um, 10.25 or 14.97, that's normally 20 euro if you want to walk in, as opposed to 10.25 for the travel agent rate. 
Thanks so much, Nicola. And Deborah says thank you as well. Thank you. And the next question that was I, that was submitted, I believe, uh, is for Laura, and that was, what is the cost for the City Walk tours? Well, I think that is probably a question for Evelyn, if I'm not mistaken. Evelyn, do you have the cost for the City Walk tours handy there? Yes, I do. Um, the walk-in price there is uh, 65 and the uh, rate for you is 52. So that the rate is 75 Canadian dollars. The walk-in rate, I'm not sure what it is. It's, I think it's 95 Canadian dollars, but the rate to you is 75. Wonderful. Thank you, Evelyn. And once again, I want to remind everyone that you can submit questions to either the Q&A box or the chat box, and those are both found in the black Zoom toolbar. Oh, and Jillian had commented on, uh, or sorry, uh, Di Diana had commented on uh, Jillian's presentation and said, um, that's a fantastic price list. Well done. <laughs> Thanks, Jillian. <clears throat> Always nice to get good feedback. Um, do we have any other questions? Renee, I see you're uh, off to Ireland in October. That's very exciting. Lots of happening around then. So make sure to check out those Halloween events I mentioned. And then obviously Taste the Island as well. Very exciting, definitely. And it looks like a couple more questions have been submitted here. Um, oh, right. Uh, so Jillian, who had asked that previous question, says, uh, are these rates commissionable? Uh, sorry, Jillian, which rates are you referring to? Is it the whiskey so one? That would be, uh, actually, I think, I'm not sure because her, her previous question was about, about uh, Armagh, but then, um, but I'm not sure if that's what she's referring to. Okay, well, we'll give Gillian a minute or two, and then um, I see Heather was oh. asking about the exclusive page. Um, so just, we will share that after um, in the email that goes out. Oh, that's great. Perfect. And uh, Victoria asked if you could please go back to the email page. Yeah, perfect. So we're on that. That's right. I can see that now. Great. I just had the Q&A screen up in front of me. <laughs> Thank you. No worries. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so Gillian's wondering if any of them are commissionable. So um, I suppose if each of our presenters want to answer that. Yeah, Ev 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 Evelyn here from Fab Food Trails. Yes, they are. Our walk-in price, as I say, is uh, 95 Canadian dollars. The price to you is 75 uh, Canadian dollars. It's Gillian here from Armagh Cider Company. Um, the prices that I've quoted are, are all um, reduced prices for tour operator rate. Um, in terms of them being commissionable, of course, um, the driver and any guide um, is free for all of the experiences as well. So I hope that helps. Oh, definitely. Thank you. If anybody would like a copy of a, a more together um, format for the pricing for the Whiskey Museum, I can send over all of the rates um, later in a more. Uh, yeah, I can do that as well, Evelyn here. Yeah. Perfect. So what we can do then is we will circulate after this uh, webinar just some links um, and we'll include the Facebook link too um, in that and then just the different prices. Um, and then Maury, I see that you commented just how long would it take to receive material. So um, if you just let us know what you want, you can send that through to us um, and we can dispatch it fairly quickly. Um, so it would just depend how much material, but we have a lot here and if not, we do have a warehouse. So um, I'll, I'll drop you a line afterwards just to kind of get gauge what kind of material you're looking for. That's great. Thank you so much, Roisin. And okay. then um, you see that next question there. I guess it was an overall question. Are all of them commissionable or not all of them? In the Whiskey Museum, everything we do is commissionable. Hire everything. Tours and hire. Ah, perfect. Yeah. Very good. And then Heather, I see you commented just either.
contacts for Western Canada we wanted to put on a consumer event so um, we don't have an office based in Western Canada however we do work there quite a lot um, and we would be in Vancouver for the like throughout the year so maybe we can have a conversation offline just to figure out what exactly you need and um, because we do have a lot of resources as I said and brochures Um, so you can, if you want, you can request um, promo materials from Sandra, or else you can contact um, our office. Um, but I'll circulate all of that information in the email afterwards. Oh, that's perfect. Thank you, Roisin. And Maury says thank you as well, and Deborah says thanks as I am visiting Dublin soon. Amazing. I'm so excited to hear that you're all visiting very soon. And I think October is a really great time to visit. There's a lot happening, um, but all throughout the year is also great. So if we've no other questions, um, I think that's it for today. I just wanted to thank all of our presenters for presenting today. I'm really hungry now after all that, and I'm dying to go on a few tours when I go home. Um, but then I want to thank all of the people that attended too, and obviously my colleague Laura too. So thanks so much, guys, and have a lovely day. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Bye bye. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mike. Okay. Yes, thank you, Jillian, Roisin, Evelyn, Laura, and Nicola. And thank you to all the travel agents that tuned in today. We really appreciate you taking time out of your day. And just a quick reminder that the recording of this webinar will be available on the Baxter Media YouTube channel tomorrow afternoon. So thanks so much. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.